Hi, my name is Joseph and welcome to part 14 of chapter 1 EG Wolf of the 9th Avenue of Digimon Seekers. So this part picks up with EG and Logomon. They finally get off the subway entering 9th Avenue. And as EG uh, walks up the steps, he says verbatim, Is this another country? A real slum? Is this crazy? I'm in danger here. Uh, so as it turns out, 9th Avenue is not the most luxur uh, luxurious uh, area in Wasp Slum. Um, it's described to the to two real life uh, locations. Uh, the first one being uh, Colin uh, Castle, uh, which we'll discuss during the well, actually, excuse me, Colin uh, um, Wild District is the real life equivalent, but Colin Castle is from Digimon Seekers. But we'll discuss that during the analysis. And the second uh, element that is described to real life element is to uh, the Kubak. I'm probably not pronouncing this correctly, but the Kubu Kabi Gochko District of the Senjuku. Uh, sorry, I missed out over the Kampuchu district of Shinjuku from the Showa era specifically, the state of Showa era. Again, we'll discuss that uh, in some detail during the, uh, the analysis, the analytical portion. But continuing forward, uh, it's again reiterated that Waslam is the boundary between the real world and the digital world due to the network. And since information is always going through the network, this means that one day is always different from the next day uh, within Waslam in general. Uh, and within Ninth Avenue, actually, let me start over. Waslam is always changing, it's been stated, but more specifically, Ninth Avenue, it's changing on a daily occurrence. Um, uh, that's why it needs to be mapped out again. Again, what's uh, EG and Logomon's mission to map out Ninth Avenue due to its changing nature? Uh, but yeah, so that's reiterated. Uh, once again, EG asks uh, Logomon if he's intelligent. Logomon says, yes, of course. And EG, in an excited tone in an excited uh, description he states well that's awesome i want you to start helping me with more difficult aspects now and also you're my superior should i refer to you as my superior and logomon says quit it this is why uh your dog did not respect you and then logomon pats um eg or nudges him on the on the on the shoulder or the back kind of and eg starts launching his tool from his linker strap so <laughs> really cute interaction obviously uh eg is being a little bit too excited uh, but I like how it seems like EG is wanting to increase the relationship between himself and Logomon. Excuse me, this is just a summary, so let's not get ahead of ourselves with the analysis. Uh, continuing forward, um, so it's described that Wasp Slum can't be described. It's a maze. If anyone has tried to actually walk through it, they'll get disoriented due to Wasp Slum not even having. So really quickly, right here it's saying Wasp Slum, but I think specifically it's talking about Ninth Avenue. Again, the translation, there's some... Um, things that could be desired or rather things could be wanted more from the translation unfortunately but I think specifically 9th Avenue is being described right here not Waslam as a, as a whole uh, but again if anyone was to walk through uh, 9th Avenue they're going to become disoriented due to the fact that not only is it a, 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 a an area that's in shambles but also architecturally there's no unition uh, there's no uh, unition or uh, architectural unity uh, it's confusing for the individual. There's tall buildings, small buildings, buildings that don't look like they go along together, and so forth. Um, there are Digimon that are around, but they're all hiding. According to EG's linker strap, they, they, they can be detected, and Logomon can obviously detect them as well. Probably smelling, uh, his senses smelling, hearing them. Uh, but they're all in hiding. Despite supposedly Digimon being present, it's almost as if it's a ghost town. It's only EG and Logomon being present. Uh, they end up going in front of uh, a castle-like area. Their destination, despite their mission being to map 9th Avenue, their main goal, their main destination is Castle, uh, excuse me, Castle of the Nine Wolves, I believe. Yeah, Castle of the Nine Wolves, excuse me. Uh, that seems to be the middle of the 9th Avenue. And once Logomon and EG gets there, so all the mission requires them is just to literally just walk around if anyone's ever played the game. <laughs> That's essentially what they're doing to map the area. But once they get to the castle, it looks less like a castle and more like a, mausole a mausoleum from Chinatown, a mausoleum in Chinatown. And um, as EG and Logomon approach this castle, uh, Logomon actually stops moving. And EG, because of his holization, he can't go too far from Logomon. He stops as well and looks behind him. And he, Logomon states that this feels familiar. I could smell, or rather not smell, but he could detect um, aspects when he used to be there. He thinks it used to be his home. But the interesting thing is that these aspects that Logomon detects, it's him, but it's not him. So really quickly, I have it verbatim. It's me, 
but not me. It's much stronger. So obviously, the, uh, he's detecting this from some, uh, it's described as markings. And EG, uh, he deduces, do you think it's your evolved form that you're detecting? And unfortunately, at this point, before they could continue discussing um, the possible uh, remembrance, all of a sudden, uh, I cut a, oh, excuse me, I wrote down the name, I probably can't pronounce it correctly. Uh, Car Cargo Dramon, there we go, Cargo Dramon uh, appears in the sky in Ultimate Level Digimon. Uh, this Digimon has appeared earlier in the part with, uh, with um, Sub oh my goodness, I forgot her name, Sabuki, I believe her name is, when Judge and Postmon um, and the Digi Police are first introduced. Cargo Dramon is the uh, Digimon that drops off the Command Dramon, the Agumon and uh, SWAT like attire. And so yes, anywho, so again, Cardromon is an ultimate level Digimon. He appears in the sky, and uh, when he appears, he's making the win a uh, rustle, and actually forces Eiji to his knees, and Logomon kind of gets into a, uh, a, a pounce-like position. And then all of a sudden, uh, Commandromon do appear, and they demand for Eiji to open up his, 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 com his uh, communications via Grimm, uh, but Eiji can't do that due to being the fact that Eiji is not the administrator. Uh, the person in charge of the voice communication is actually the uh, Sons of Chaos interviewer. Uh, so even if Eiji wanted to, he can't communicate with the Digi Police. And um, then the alert goes off, and Eiji looks at his Niku strap and he realizes that they're being surrounded. And essentially, this is how the part ends. Let me look at my notes. Yep, this is how the part ends. So, as always, let's read it directly verbatim. Uh, at the sound of the alert, E.G. looks at the map on the virtual monitor. Markers indicating Command Dramon appear in the vicinity of the Castle of the Nine Wolves. That's, uh, that's Castle is being surrounded. <laughs> so the translation. <laughs> uh, the Castle is being surrounded. They are, de they are demanding that we open voice chat. On the Grimm channel, E.G. raises his voice. The operation channel receives a warning from the police. Grimm is not a service belonging to any particular company. Even if you don't comply, it won't be an immediate criminal act by itself. But it will mean that you have to take. Uh, but it will mean that you have taken a defiant attitude toward a state power. What to do? That's not the question. The administrator of this operation channel is the interviewer. E.G. doesn't have authority to open it. Come on, don't play dumb with me, Code Cracker. Boom. A shrill voice comes from the Cardamon above. A suffocating voice. A cartoony voice. It directly strikes E.G.'s mind league sense of hearing. <laughs> I just, I'm laughing because I'm starting to realize uh, it wouldn't surprise me if that's uh, Subuki. Uh, probably me, I, I can't recall. Uh, the Digi Police, that we, uh, 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 individual, ind individual, the character who works with the Digi Police that we got introduced, uh, who communicates with Judge or with Leon Alexander. Um, but yeah, we'll find out next week if indeed that is Subuki. Anywho, so we could now move on to the analysis. So the first quote that I want to look at is going back to the, um, the description of 9th Avenue. What do you call this thing? Uh, excuse me, what do you call this kind of thing? Colin Castle, Showa Ara Kabachuku. He looks up at the city block from the bottom of the valley of illegal buildings. Colin Castle, a poor house that once existed in Hong Kong before the reversion to China, was a slum built by illegal immigrants on land that had been ungoverned by the government. Or the, Kuba, or the Kubijuku district of Shinjuku in the Showa era. A sleepless castle of neon signs for restaurants, brothels, hotels, and other establishments. Dens of wickedness. So in real life, uh, if one has not looked into the Colin Watts city, I'm probably going to review my ignorance, but this is my first time looking into, um, well, it's a real city. I've always heard of Colin and other Digimon games, Cyber Sleuth, there's an area called Colin. And I think I've also heard it seen, uh, I've come across it in other mediums as well. Um, but I never really uh, looked into it, unfortunately, and I do regret that. If one has never done that, I highly recommend at the very least looking up a, a, a picture, Colin Watt City. And wow, it's just crazy how it's, it, it looks like something from a little bit like, I don't want to sound dramatic, but a little bit something like medieval times, uh, but with modern buildings. Modern, quote unquote, because it, it looks very drab. If one was to see a picture... Though, though, I think they'll know what I'm, what I'm referring to. But what's crazy to think about is that Colin Watts City was actually present um, since the 19... Excuse me. Um, from the 1950s to the 1970s. And it actually was around not into... Uh, the, 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 it's com excuse me. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I right, thank you for your patience. So, yes. Yeah, so in 1987, that's when plans was announced to demolish Colin Watts City. And it was finally uh, completely uh, demolished 
I began in 1933, excuse me, 1993 in March and was completed in April 1994. I think what happened right there was because March was the third month, 19, and then my brain somehow, uh, the month three, anywho, but 1993, and it was finished being demolished by April 1994. Ecole Watt City Park was opened in December 1995, and it occupies the area that was formerly the Watt City. And so all of this is really recent, and it occurred in the 21st century. And it's just really wild to imagine that a city like this existed, and I could see why why Ninth Avenue is being compared to Colin Watt City. That uh, aspect of being claustrophobic, of being uh, 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 suffocating, everything being closed in and tight knit. Uh, so the other element that was discussed was uh, uh, Kugujoko uh, in Shinjuku. So if one is not aware, this is actually a popular district entertainment area. Um, it's called Kupujuku because originally a theater was going to be opened up there. Although the theater was never opened, that name and that nickname, I suppose, uh, stuck and it just became part of its official name. Uh, I think what's being discussed here, so specifically, it's stated that Kupujuku during the Showa era. Who is Showa? Uh, so from December 25th, 1926 to January 7th, 1989, uh, he was the emperor. Uh, so this is the Showa era when the Emperor Showa, so that's his name, like Victor, uh, uh, um, Queen Victoria. It's called the Victorian era because it's named after her. Same idea here, Emperor Showa, so it's called the Showa era. Um, he was the individual in power during this time period. I've only done light research, so I'm going to assume maybe the entertainment district was not as pleasant as it is today. Um, it's just in, in Digimon Seekers, the den of wickedness, right? Maybe in the past. Um, the Shinjuku Entertainment District had a more unsavory beginnings. I have to look more into that. So again, please, if I sound ignorant, it's because I am. <laughs> I'm ignorant about this information. This is my first time looking into it. But I wanted to discuss. I wanted to discuss it since Ninth Avenue is compared, um, what well, to call in Walt City and to the Kubuchi in Shinjuku dis in the Shinju Shinjuku District, the Kubuchuku Entertainment. Area. I know that was horrible. Please excuse me, and I do thank you for your patience. Uh, I just found that really interesting, though. But moving on to the second quote that I want to focus on, Logomon, what is it? Are you by chance intelligent? Eg's uh, e e eyes glaze over. Digimon are intelligent, and I'll have you help me with the hard stuff. Should I refer to you as my superior? Quit it. I love you, Logomon. You're so helpful. You're so very helpful. If Eg had to tell, he would be wagging it, and that's why your dog looked down on you. So hurry up and get to work. With Logomon patting E.G. on the back, E.G. launches the two on his virtual monitor. So I just wanted to read this quote just because uh, I do like the commonality that's demonstrated between it. I think this is E.G. attempting to bridge the gap, um, that code gap between uh, himself and Logomon. He wants, let's say, working relationship, a working partnership, and more an actual friendship. Um, I think this is just E.G. joking around, kidding around with Logomon. And also, I think this is uh, Digimon Seeker's way to, again, just reiterate that Digimon are not just alive, they're not just sentient, but they're also sapient. Again, the difference between sentient is that with sentient, one is aware of their emotions, but they're not really growing from their emotions, so they demonstrate sadness, happiness. With sapient, on the other hand, one is able to grow from those emotions, and when it's feeling sad, they'll, they'll try to figure out why they're feeling sad and try to counter that. So again, Digimon are essentially individuals. They're like human. They're more like human beings and less like uh, dogs, cats, and so forth. Or although we might love dogs and cats, um, they're obviously not as, intel not as intelligent as human beings. That is not the case with Digimon. So I like how they're reinforming that. I know it might be kind of annoying at this point, but <laughs> I think we could probably blame the translation. I'm hoping in the original wording, it's it's done a little bit more eloquently, a little bit more organically and naturally. But another reason why I do like this quote is just because um, the way that it ends, uh, Logomon patting E.G. on the back, E.G. launches the tool. So the fact that Logomon is willing to actually touch E.G., I think if Logomon was quote-unquote mm, disgusted or disappointed that he was being forced to work with E.G., he wouldn't be willing to even do that, to pat E.G. on the back. Um, so I think that's the, a small hint that the relationship will become um, closer as we continue with the story. That might just be me over reading it, but <laughs> I just like that detail. Um, yeah, so I just like how EG is joking with Logomon. I like how the story is reinforming that Digimon are more akin to humans than, and, than pets. And then again, uh, indicating that Logomon has the capacity to 
evolve uh, uh, to have his relationship with EG2 grow. Um, going on to the next quote, if he tried to describe if EG if EG tried to describe Ninth Avenue in words, he would lose his mind. There are no straight streets. Alleys are nothing more than gaps between buildings. The width and direction of the streets are all a mess. And there was clearly no urban planning. There are no restrictions of the floor area ratio, diagonal line restrictions, earthquakes resistance standards, or any other legal regulations based on the building standards law. To add insult to injury, not even architectural mechanics seem to exist here. If one were to, be, uh, sorry, if one were to bring in realistic human sensibilities, one would feel uneasy just by being here and will forever walk around thinking of the inevitable collapse to happen at a mere two seconds later. If a signboard hanging from a single screw falls, the steel frame over there will snap and all the buildings around it will collapse like dominoes. I just think this is a really great description of 9th Avenue. I think Wasslem as a whole, the audience understand that it's a, understands that it looks very cyberpunk. Buildings are everywhere, buildings of different and varying lengths and sizes. But now specifically, we're getting such an apt description of 9th Avenue. Despite this futuristic description, we could really see how uh, 9th Avenue, it reminds me more of the shoddy areas if one has ever played Cyberpunk uh, 2077, I think it's called, that Cyberpunk game from CD Projekt Red. I would definitely imagine the parts of once of Wasslam that are a little bit more presentable and um, livable, when we're an area where one would actually want to have a life. Versus the areas that like Ninth Avenue, that's a little bit more undesirable, right? I just think it's a really good description, and it really does a great job of highlighting how Ninth Avenue uh, is both alien uh, but also at the same time familiar, and how it's just very Digimon, Digimon rather than human. And what I mean by that is, it seems like obviously the Digimon have they don't have any qualms or issues uh, traveling and interacting with Ninth Avenue, but if a human were to be uh, uh, to was to if a human was to try to understand the logistics of Ninth Avenue, it, it just wouldn't really work. Why? I think that's emphasizing the differences between Digimon and um, and humans, kind of like a cultural difference a little bit. I don't think I am thinking too much into this with, with that statement, but again, I, I just like the fact that I can think that because of this description. Um, the next quote I want to focus on, E.G. I've gone ahead of Logomon, but he cannot go too far because he's in the middle of a holization. This is my home, or at least it was. Did you remember something? There is a faint smell. Markings are left behind me. It's me, but not me. It's much, much stronger. Then, could it be? EG has an idea. Could it be an evolved version of you? I just like this because although it's mom really highlights the uh, relationship between EG and Logomon, uh, EG is going ahead of him, um, but he stops. Stops for two reasons, I think. The first one be the obvious, the holization, but also because uh, Logomon has stopped. They're walking together. If one has ever walked with their friend or with their family member or whatever, and they just stop walking, it is uh, 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 not concerning. It is um, um, obvious, right? You're not going to keep on walking. You're going to go, whoa, what happened, individual? Like, what happened, friend? Why are you back there? Or if you do, if you don't notice right away, when you start continuing with the conversation, you eventually will notice, right? So I like that because I think EG stopped both for the holization, but also because he was caring about Logomon. Um, and also this quote I think really emphasizes once again EG's uh, uh, his lack of not being a quote unquote stupid individual. Again, uh, it's Bandai that, that and Bandai and characters within the story that likes to describe EG as not being the most intelligent individual. But we see right here that again he's really great at being astute. Uh, instead of being confused, EG is able to come up with his own conclusion. Oh, Logomon, maybe what you're smelling, it's yourself but evolved. Maybe you're smelling your involved version of yourself. I just really do appreciate that the small details that really makes the characters feel a little bit more alive. I'm sure it could feel even more alive if the transition was more organic, but I'm not going to really going to uh, highlight about that because I think uh, we've discussed that enough. That's such a uh, I feel like it's a little bit of a superficial detail, but I can understand why it'll affect the flow and the relationship, uh, the characterization of the characters and everything like that. Right? Excuse me. It's early in the morning, so if I stumbled on my words right there, please, uh, uh, I thank you for your patience. <laughs> Hopefully, I made sense, though. So the next quote I want to focus on, something's coming. Logomon turns his nose to the narrow sky between the buildings, a burr, a war. The wind howls. The war hits the ground and blows away the surrounding garbage data. E.G. is forced to his knees. Logomon stomps his feet. What is it? What's coming? A winged monstrosity casts a shadow over Colin Castle. After closing his eyes because of the dust, E.G. holds up his hand, looks up at the sky with dimmed eyes. A bird? A dragon? No, neither. It's that. So this, 
Uh, so despite the fact that when Kogdramon first appears, EG is forced to his knees, uh, that may at superficially seem like, wow, EG is such a useless character. He's not a worthless character, not very useful. It's going to be, all the actions going to be placed on up, up, upon Logomon. I think that this quote uh, um, is textual evidence to go against that idea because if Legion was as truly as useless as one may think that he is, um, he wouldn't be acting right here. So the wind howls, the war hits the gr the war hits the ground and blows away the surrounding garbage data. EG is forced to his knees. Logomon stomps his feet. So Logomon's the only one who's in position ready to act. Um, oh, sorry, I was looking at the specific part I wanted to look at. Despite that, though, after closing his eyes because of the dust, EG holds up his hand and looks up at the sky with dimmed eyes. He's still willing to participate in the action, even if he's a little bit at a disadvantage, well, because he's not a Digimon, right? He's just a human being, a hollowized human being, a human individual. Yet despite this, he's still doing his best to work as a partner, to give information to Logomon and to try to assist him. Even if it's not conscious, um, EG is not aware he's doing this because he wants to. I think subconsciously, that's just what one does when they're working in a partnership, when they're working in a team. And again, I just, as always, I just like getting textual evidence that supports that EG is a lot more um, astute than we give him credit for. We being both the uh, audience, but also the characters from the story. So after this, uh, an alert goes off. At the sound, an alert goes off. At the sound of the alert, EG looks at the map on the virtual monitor. Markers indicating Command Jumon appear in the vicinity, in the vicinity, sorry, in the vicinity of the castle of the Nine Wolves, of the Nine Wolves. The castle is being surrounded. Again, I just like this quote because it further, I think it connects organically to what I was stating before, how EG, despite being on his knees, he's not a useless individual. He's an individual that always that's always adapting to his environment. And again, he's being useful right here. He's being helpful. Uh, he hears the alert and he starts utilizing the tools that EG has on him, which is the linker strap. And he realizes, uh-oh, we're being surrounded. Again, I just really do appreciate these kinds of details that add so much characterization, I believe, to EG. Um, and then the last quote that I want to focus on is very much towards the end. Um, they, the DG police, are demanding that we open voice chat on the Grim channel. EG raises his voice. The operation channel receives a warning from the police. Grim is not a service belonging to any particular company. Even if you don't comply, it won't be an immediate criminal act by itself, but it will mean that you have taken a defiant attitude toward a state power. What to do? That's not the question. The administrator of this operation channel is the interviewer. EG doesn't have the authority to open it. So what I like so much about this is when I see the trailer for chapter one, I was a little bit confused about how AG is going to end up butting heads with the Digi Police because I don't think that AG is going. To, he, I don't think that AG is the type of individual to do illegal activities, the kind of illegal activities that will harm people, that kind of activities that will make the Digi Police go, "Hey, we need to go after this individual." And they're doing really negative actions that's hurting the community. Um, so this is really great. And now I'm starting to realize I, uh, being the audience member, the reader, the reason why the Digi Police are going after EG is because of circumstances. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, well, actually, that's a great question. If EG was able to open up the channel, would he communicate with the Digi Police? I don't think he would because he understands that he's trying to join a, a group that is, <laughs> that's not going to have the best relationship with law enforcement, right? The Sons of Chaos. So I think even if EG had the chance to open up communications, I don't think he would take that chance, but I think with that being said, I think if things uh, came push, if push came to shove and it looked like things was looking a little bit detrimental, I do believe that Iggy would at least try to explain the situation, but only as a last resort, not a action he'll go to right away. Uh, but again, he can't even do that. Why? Well, because he doesn't even have he doesn't even have that option. He's not the administrator for the voice chat; it's the interviewer. And one needs to keep in mind that um, in the last part, the interviewer, after realizing that it's Logomon, after him and his partner recognized Logomon, they choose to make this test a bit harder. So I wonder if maybe, so there's two, so why are the Digi Police here? Maybe because Logomon seems to have a history. Maybe they're keeping an eye, they being the Digi Police are keeping an eye on this castle because of these nine wolves, whatever they may be, right? Or maybe it's just because that interviewer, he tipped off the Digi Police. Maybe they, he, they being the uh, Sons of Chaos interviewer and his partner, his Digimon partner, maybe they do, they told the Digi Police some um, some uh, code crackers are going to be uh, uh, attempting to steal information or do a terrorist activity or something along that nature, right? I'm sure we'll find out as the story continues, but um, 
yeah, so those are all the quotes that I wanted to focus on. This was a shorter chapter in terms of ideas, uh, but I think it was a fun chapter in terms of its action. Next week, we're definitely going to see how AG is going to communicate with the Digi Police, and we're going to finally, I think, see uh, Logomon evolving into, uh, oh, so excuse me, spoilers, one is not looking at the information that Bandai Namco posts up, but of uh, Logomon's evolution uh, to his adult form, uh, Logarmon. I may not be pronouncing that correctly. Um, but if one is reading Digimon Secret Steel, please let me know what's your opinion about chapter one so far. I think that we probably have maybe two more parts, maybe three parts is pushing it. But we're definitely nearing the end of chapter one. And so far, I am personally enjoying it. I'm loving the, uh, the again, the I keep saying this for I didn't look up the synonym. But the characterization of other of all the main characters of E.G., and Logomon, and even though they haven't been discussed in a little bit, but I still do appreciate Professor Virginji's character. Um, I'm looking forward to discovering more about Sabuki. Uh, I can't believe I forgot her name, um, but she was only in one part. And then of course that that relationship between Judge and Postman, who is looking like uh, Judge is Leon Alexander, who in the other part it gets revealed that E.G. was best friends with Leon. Um, but it seems like he's no longer friends with Leon. What happened to that relationship? I'm sure we're going to get more information about that. Mm. So thank you so much. Sorry, I was just thinking about that's so everything I wanted to discuss. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I do appreciate it. Uh, please do let me know your opinions about Digimon Seekers. Are you enjoying it yourselves? Let me know in the comments or via personal message. Have a pro-digits day and uh, take care. Thank you again.